um, I was thinking maybe we can we can start by just explaining what we did for the 2016 physics um, for the upcoming pack of the you know 2016 season that we will be releasing soon. Um, so maybe you guys, Karsten and Bruno, you want to to share you know what what could it, what we improved, um, what you didn't like before, and what what we did basically uh, so far. I mean, tonight uh, Bruno is testing a new version in the beta, in the closed beta, that uh, is now based on the, the feedback that he gave uh, in the previous session that was made in private. And uh, now he's uh, going to, you know, give his feedback to to Karsten on on the improvements. So Karsten and Bruno, maybe you want to to explain uh, what we did. Karsten, Basically. you want to start? Yeah, I can start with. Uh with all that was done. I'm, I'm not going to go complete in complete detail, but it was basically a complete overhaul. The, the aim was to make the car a lot more, a lot more sensitive, a lot more uh, responsive, um, a lot more picky in, in, in every aspect, really. With a, you know, so it's much more setup sensitive. It's more camper sensitive. It's more aerodynamic sensitive. Uh, and also now, compared to the others, you really get punished when you run over the curbs. Uh, you wasn't so much before. I mean, in, in now the 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 curbs can grab the on the the skid plank, or you call it, you know, the on the tray of the car. <clears throat> so you have to consider some of the curbs if you can run over or not run over. Um, <clears throat> so so. But there's basically every every element of the car was touched. I mean, it, the the aerodynamics were completely redone. The suspension was completely redone, based on 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 data that I found in the in the technical manager manuals. But there there were these zones where the suspension points had to be in between. There was like five by five centimeter boxes, so that gave me at least some idea of how it was put together. And then you know a little bit of creative freedom to you know to 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 make it behave uh, and with that came completely new the springs are the same essentially as, as they were before running the same motion ratios uh, but the dampers were were all changed we worked the engine is the same but it's much has much less inertia so it's Picking up RPM a lot quicker than it did before. Uh, tires completely new as well to to fit this and also what has been learned basically in in all to try and make a much more much more responsive uh, DTM car. Yeah, I think um, like last time we spoke and. On between the last time we, we spoke on the phone and and, uh, and the last time I tested the version, there was a, a huge step done in the right direction uh, in physics, in the uh, how realistic actually the car uh, was to drive. I mean, like we have spoken also in the past, there is a few bits here and there to improve on the steering response and the way the way you you get you put the steering into the corners. How much input do you have to actually put? To turn the car, uh, but all these things has improved a lot, and I have to say that the driving has got much more realistic, and everything you do with the car now responds much closer to reality um, than, than than it was before. So that definitely went all in the right direction. And the car is actually a lot of fun to drive, I have to say. Um, we have a question from Facebook already, actually, uh, and that's. One for you, Karsten. Um, are they going to be data displays for the uh, 2016 cars? It's New actually data be for displays. you. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I made it. Yeah, but it, I mean, Karsten has been working on those, and we will update the cars with uh, proper data displays. Um, maybe not on release date, uh, depending on when we patch, uh, but definitely something that will come for all our cars. Actually, we will. Uh, I mean, Karsten, you made a. I don't know, 10 a or 12. lot, yeah, a lot of new data displays types from old brands out there. 
That's actually something I, I wanted to ask you about the, you know, the applying of the throttle, because it's something I can change. Because at the moment, you know, I can only base it on one, what I what I see from onboards and what we we discussed before, and especially here for 2016, you could see with the, the camera placement in all the DTM cars for the, these onboards, you could you could actually see that you know the driver's leg or foot, so you could see how he would apply the throttle. So I tried to mimic that. And then I have to kind of guess what the car is actually doing and why they're doing it. So what I'm what I'm wondering is, is it too much? I mean, because you have if you if you apply the if you're off the throttle and you go on the throttle too hard now with with these DTM cars, it's kind of it's almost rubber banding. You know, it's it's building up the power and releasing it to, to you know the drivetrain flex basically. Yeah, I mean, so, so, uh, so you can. Yeah, it's a good subject. I mean, in, for example, in slow corners, when I apply power, I see, or I, in, in, on the game, I feel that the car really wants to turn around, actually, when you apply the power, uh, which is, in real, it's also the case. Uh, it's something that you do sometimes as a driver. You know, you apply power to try and turn the car around, and that actually helps a lot of times, and that's, what happening, that's what's happening in the game. So that's also a pretty good, pretty good tool to play with. Um, also, another thing that we haven't spoken about, the game has improved a lot in uh, respect of tire degradation. The way the tire degrade, that's a lot better than it was before. Um, it's actually very realistic in a qualifying lap. If you do put a new set of tires, your car is just uh, quicker and has more grip. And then the more you drive, the more you lose the grip, obviously. I have a question, yeah. a question from Christian Ebner. Uh, can Bruno tell us a little bit about the setup he's using, or um, you know maybe I, I think the question is also are you doing setup changes right now that actually you would do in a real car? Uh, yeah, but, well, I'm not changing much now. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to go down on fuel to see how it is really, um, and also preload. I'm going to go down a bit on the different diff preload because I have a bit of understeer in the middle of the corners and. I don't want to have too much understeer in all these uh, slow and medium speed corners, so I'm going down on this, and yeah, that, that's pretty much it for now. I'm just not going to change too much because I have to get used to the used to the car again and um, used to the game. So I'm just going to drive basically and, and change a few little details. Uh, Bruno, yeah, do you, I'm just uh, on, on regarding the braking again. Uh, do you know actually how much uh, difference in brake pressure? I mean, you applying, so say you, you, you know, for the maximum braking here for the hairpin, you might do, I don't know, 120 kilos or whatever on the brake pedal, and then on the least, in the corner where you use the least braking, how much, how much pressure are you applying there? Do you know those? Yeah, the least braking you use about 20 bars, 15, 20 bars. And your max? Uh, the max can go up to um, 100, over 100 bar actually. Oh wow. How much setup, that's a question from Christian Rackel. Uh, how much setup work do you do in real life? Uh, how does your race engineer take care of all such things? How much setup work do you do in real life? Yes. Uh, I mean, the most important thing as a driver for the setup is the feedback. So, you know, you're not gonna tell your engineer, uh, do this and put this spring and do that change and change that and this. Um, you're gonna, the most important thing is you know that you, that you know how to explain exactly what your car does, um, in what corner, uh, if your car is good on the brakes, bad on the brakes, you know, what, how is the car reacting? Then you have to explain that as perfect as you can uh, once this is done, it's up to the engineer really to, to get the to, to have the right decision. You know, you're not, you know, an engineer is never gonna, no, never gonna jump in your car and, and drive for you because it's not gonna work. So I'm not gonna do my engineer's work actually because that's not gonna work either. You know. So my, it, it's it's really important to know when the engineer does a change on the car. Um, what the car does and where it changed, what areas did the car improve, 
that's that's the most important and you have to be as accurate as possible when you describe what the car does that's pretty much what uh, what you guys did Karsten and you um, I mean you were driving and just giving feedback on what it does and what you felt um, wasn't right and then Karsten would just do his magic yeah, Bruno was excellent at pinpointing the, the problem zone, so it could be high speed on the steer or something. And then, rather than me just jumping in and stabbing at the problem, you know, Bruno would actually isolate the problem and go, it's the tire. Rather than me trying to just add, you know, more downforce or whatever, so I knew where to look. Yeah. Which was, yeah, extremely helpful. Well, that's good, but you know, again, you need also someone who reacts well in that respect. You know, it's not only good to just say the right things; it's also good to react well, and you reacted well. And that's also what's important in racing. You know, to have a good engineer who can understand and react well on the changes. You know. And yeah, we have a question about the game from uh, Paul Schalm. Uh, he's asking, uh, when would we have a, a flex system? and a better tire model. I can I can answer on the flag system. That's something we have started working on. Uh, so that will be in a, in a future patch. Um, and better tire model, that's something that we constantly improve. I mean, Karsten, you can... Um, yeah, we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not changing the tire model. I mean, the, the, all the math and the physics behind it is the same. We're not changing it. We're just changing the way that we approach it. Because there's so many angles of attack on, on these, because we have so many parameters, so it might be that you know, it's kind of it's, it's it's like mixing, uh, you know, making a, 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 a you know dinner. You have all the right ingredients. It's just finding the right amount for each ingredient, and then eventually you have the an awesome dinner. So what uh, what should we change now? I mean, uh, it's it's a bit hard to, in these conditions uh, to to focus on on the actual handling of what you're driving. But uh, before we went live, we discussed a little bit the traction. Uh, that would be maybe an area uh, where we can uh, still improve before release. Yeah, I think there is the traction, and there is also still the the tire grip could be improved a little bit on the front in fast corners. So I should I shouldn't apply that much steering wheel in a fast corner. I, you know, the tire grip should be still quite different on a fast corner than it is on a on a slow one because in the fast corner you have a lot of downforce on the front. Um, I've seen a, a few questions about VR. Uh, any plans for Oculus support and Vive? Uh, that's something that we are currently working on. Uh, it was requested for events. Um, as you have seen, we are quite busy with uh, on-site events. Uh, we were there for uh, with Race Room uh, at Hockenheim. Uh, that's uh, something that uh, is required uh, for events, so it will most likely bleed into the Steam game. Uh, so virtual reality headsets uh, should be coming. Question from Timon Nadehold. Um Are you planning to include technical issues in the game, like engine failures, punctures, etc.? Well, punctures is something I looked at. Um, uh, was it last week? Um, because right now, if you if you get your tire worn out to the to the point where you know they blink red, uh, they will never puncture, which is uh, sad. Uh, but that's something that we can actually easily, rather easily um, add because there is already support for it in the game. So uh, definitely something that we will be adding. So uh, if if you keep driving and on worn tires, you will risk uh, getting a puncture. And then engine failures is all already in the game if you run with damage, uh, damage enabled. All right. So to com to 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 summarize, what we need to change before release. So we need to look into traction, improving the traction, and then the grip on the front tires. You were saying. Yeah, in fast corners, um, mm. the grip. In my opinion, the faster the car goes, uh, the more you need, the more grip you need on the front axle because of the downforce. Uh, and then the car, when the car gets slower, then the, the, the steering amount I have to apply is about right, is about like in reality. Just in fast corners, I have to apply a little bit too much steering angle in the mid corner um, to get the car to actually grip on the front. 
So here we are, here we are in Nürburgring, coming to turn one. Uh, there's a big bump, it's a second year corner, but there's a big bump in the middle where you get the front right wheel in the air most of the time. Turn two is a little bit bumpy too, just a little lift in third gear and then back on the power. Traction is very important here. Uh, year two downshift, the second gear, quite bumpy in the middle of the corner. Then here you gotta get hit this apex right there to be early on the power. Third gear, fourth gear, very tricky corner coming up now. Oh, I just see that I'm losing my... Here you go, camera. Sorry. Okay, so here we are back. In the Schumacher S, that's third gear corner as well here in the game. And in reality. Up to fifth gear, that's a flat right-hander. Sixth gear. Here is going to be four downshifts, breaking about 100 meter. Second gear corner. Very bumpy, the exit is very important here, also quite slippery at the exit always. And here's a third gear corner, you can actually do it in second too, but third gear is a bit quicker on the entry. On the curve at the exit, and we're back on the main straight. Anyway, it was good fun racing with you, and um, let's organize another session in the next couple of weeks. Huh? I, I can't say exactly when, but I'll be busy, but in the next couple of weeks I would like to play these guys again because they are very good. All right, sounds good. And maybe, uh, maybe we do that in the public uh, after we patch. Sure. Um, sure. So everyone can join. Yeah, sure. Um, but in the meantime, and we we will be working on uh, on the feedback you, you provided, and um, there will be another version in the beta before before the patch day. Okay. Cool. So yeah, thanks for this, and I hope uh, everyone on Facebook enjoyed uh, the session and uh, and all those questions. Um, hope you. I hope I relayed all the questions and didn't forget any. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Bruno, thank you again for your time thank tonight. You. Thanks to you, and um, well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was good fun. Congratulations again to the winners tonight. Um, I'm gonna have some. I'm gonna have to train a lot to match you guys. But uh, <laughs> anyways, it was good fun, and um, I hope we can race again soon. And uh, well, I wish everyone a nice evening. Um, have a good dinner. Whatever you guys are doing, maybe it's not dinner time for you, maybe it's lunch time or breakfast, I don't know. But I wish you all of you guys a good day uh, and a good evening. Bye-bye.